This strategy has a 72.22% win rate for your prop firm challenges. Hey, my name is René and welcome back to another video on this channel. This is a really, really interesting video, I think, for everyone who is trading and for everyone who thinks about starting a prop firm challenge because you are able to predict your winning chances before you even start it. How this works and what steps you exactly need to do is what I will teach you or show you in this video. So there will be several parts. First of all, I will show you what it is about and how you can calculate your winning chances and what I did to calculate the winning chances for this specific strategy. And then I also want to um, explain to you yeah, what the winning, winning chance for this specific strategy is and how many trades you take or you need on average to win or lose a prop firm challenge. Also, I will show you the code, the source code that you will need to implement in your trading strategy to get this data. And then I will also show you how you can use this in the optimization. So let's first of all talk about what this video is about. So when we want to analyze the winning chances of our strategy, we, we first of all need to have a strategy. So a strategy can be anything pretty much. So for example, this is the range breakout EA that I'm using here right now. And maybe I can show it to you in this video, but I made several videos already where I trade this strategy. So it's really simple. It is a strategy that trades every day and we just have a time range in the morning and then we trade the breakout at the top and the bottom of this range. And then we see how it goes. So this is um, really important. This is a strategy that is a classic um, interday or in, no intraday day trading strategy. So we open and close trades during a day. This is important for the code that I will show you later on because if you have a strategy that is swing trading or that is holding positions over multiple days, you would have to modify this code slightly to have accurate results. But um, what is the main problem with a strategy and with figuring out the win rate of a, a prop firm challenge? So when you test your strategy in the MetaTrader 5 tester or when you do manual backtesting, which I would never recommend because it's complete, um, a complete waste of time and everyone who is telling you to manually backtest your strategy is just not looking at trading professional in my opinion. So what we need to do first is we will have to write an automated trading strategy. If you don't know how to do this, have a look at the videos on this channel or check out the first link in the video description for a complete course. So once you programmed your strategy, you can use the MetaTrader 5 tester and make a back test like I did here starting in 20. 15 up to 2023. I'm testing on every ticks based on real ticks. So this is the most accurate testing method yet that you pretty much can ever get. And I'm testing in USD Japanese yen. When you do this back test, you will get results like this, where you can, for example, see the maximum drawdown and stuff. But this does not really help because what we will have to do is we have to look at the graph. Because if we want to calculate the average win rate or the win rate in general for a prop firm challenge, we will have to set up some testing environment that will give us this result. So what I did is I used my expert advisor and I added code so that on every single day of these eight and a half years, I will start a, a prop firm challenge. So every single day, there will be a virtual prop firm challenge started and documented in the code of this expert advisor. And I will show you in a second how this is done. But the reason for this is because when you have rules for your prop firm, like 10% drawdown rules and also the take profit rule of 10%. So you, you either have to make 10% or you lose 10% and then you lose the challenge. But this is, of course really, really dependent on the specific day when you start the challenge. So for example, if we trade the challenge down here, of course we would win because the equity was all the way up. But if we would start here, of course we would lose because the equity was going way down and we lost more than 10% from this top here. So you, you will never hit this 
specific point or this specific point when you start a FTMO challenge or a prop firm challenge in general. What you will most likely do is that you will start somewhere in between at some random day in the history or the performance history of your program. So this is why I took every single day from this backtest and started the virtual prop firm challenge. So then we will have a total amount of days like, I don't know, what it is, is it? Like we have 250 trading days, let's say for eight years, um, or let's say 300 trading days for, for, for eight years. Uh, three times eight is 2,400 days. So we will make 2,000, so we will have 2,400 sets of data to have a look at and then get an average of every of these prop firm challenges. So then we will know the exact win rate of the strategy. And for this strategy, if we have a look at the journal here, we can have a look at this line and it says you would have won um, uh, uh, 72.22% of your challenges with an average duration of 67 days. So on average, a challenge was 67 days until it was either won or lost. And on average, 72% uh, of these challenges would have been won on the, testers, uh, on the tested history here for USC Japanese Yen with this strategy. So we picked every single starting day, this one, this one, this one. And from this day on, we started the virtual challenge and then figured out if this would have been a profit or a loss. And of course, as you can see here, the equity is increasing with this strategy in the tester, of course. So on average, we should have a positive outcome, but here we have the exact number. And in a second, I will now show you how you implement the code. So let's have a look at the source code of this program. So this is um, yeah, the overall source code of the range breakout program that I modified to get these analytics. <clears throat> and we will have a look at the code block that is important for the prop firm statistics. So I will go through, the, uh, through this block here to teach you exactly what you can implement in your own expert advisor. I will not teach programming basics in this video. So as I assume that you already program your own programs or maybe you want to learn it. Also, yeah, check out the videos on the channel or the link in the video description. So what you have to do is, or what I did is, <clears throat> first of all, I um, created a class. This is, of course, my data structure that I need to hold the information for every single day to get, um, yeah, the virtual challenge. So my class is called C challenge. It inherits from C object. This is important because I want to store them later on in C array object um, yeah, arrays. And then we have four variables here in the challenge. We have the starting time, which is yeah the day when I start the virtual challenge. We have the starting equity, which we will need, of course, to figure out if we, from this starting point on, like for example, from the starting point on, or from, from this, this is a little bit uh, more interesting, like what was this here, was it more than 10% drawdown or maybe was this the challenge win? So you will also have to figure out your starting equity and from this point on the EA has to check if first of all we hit the 10% drawdown or first of all we hit the 10% profit. So we will need the starting equity for this. Then I need the ending time, this is not really important for the uh, profitability, but it is important for the average days that a position uh, a challenge lasted. And then we have a boolean variable if this was a profitable or a winning challenge or a losing one. Okay, so this is the um, class that I implemented to hold the data for every one of these virtual challenges. Then I created two arrays. First of all, the challenges that are still active and then the challenges that are finished. Okay, then in the onTester function, which is the function, this is only called once when the testing run is finished. And you can see here we have these two print statements where I print, um, wait, this is not really important. This was just for, uh, for, for bug fixing. Uh, here you can see I have this print statement. You would have won uh, X percent of your challenges with an average duration of average days. And this is what we can exactly see here in the journal. So this is printed only once at the end of a test. 
And here, what I do in this onTester function is, I create two variables, of course, the counter for the profitable challenges and the counter for the days that in total the challenges took. And then I loop through all the challenges that were finished in this whole period here. And what I did here is I took every single challenge and checked if it was a winning challenge. Then I increased the counter for the winning challenges and also I increased the counter for the total dates. And then I just um, divided these values or each of these values with the total amount of challenges that were finished in this test. And this will give me the um, average win rate. So how do we get the challenges inside of this challenges fin um, uh, array? This is what I do in the onTick function. So in the onTick function, first of all, I check if there is a new day. So if there is a new day, like in the testing here, so for every single day, at the start of every single day, I then create a new challenge. This is just the um, class here, and I will create a new object variable or a reference for this um, challenge. And then I set the start time to the current point of time and the start equity to the current equity here of the account. And then I add this, uh, this challenge to the challenges. And make sure to understand that this is this array now and not this one. This one also only holds the finished challenges and this one holds the challenges that are still active. So how do we get the challenges from here to here? This is what I do in the next step. So here again, every single day I create one of these new virtual challenges and I put it in the challenges array. Then whenever the equity changes, this is what I check here. So with every single tick, the program checks if the equity changes. And if it does, we loop through all the active challenges. We take every single challenge and then we check if the current equity is now bigger than the starting equity plus whatever target you have for your prop firm challenge. I took 1000 euro here because in my test I started with 10,000 euros. So this is a 10k challenge and usually your prop firm will have a 10% goal which would be 1000 euro. So if the equity is now bigger than the starting equity of this specific challenge plus 1000, the result will be 1 which means the challenge is 1. Then if the equity is smaller than the challenge starting equity minus 1000, the result will be set to minus 1 which means the challenge is lost. Then we check if we have any result which means that it's either won or lost. And then we check, uh, or we update the end time, we check if the challenge was won by checking if result is greater than zero. And then we add this challenge where we now updated all the member variables. And uh, we add this challenge to the challenges fin um, array, and then we detach it from the challenges array. So this is pretty much it. And yeah, that's all we do. So this is what we do in the onTick function. Every single day we create a new challenge. Then we check if this challenge was won or lost. We update the challenges fin array. And then in the onTester function, we just at the end of the test calculate the averages. And this will give us the average win rate in the journal once the test is finished. Also, it will not only give us the information here in the journal, but it will also give us the uh, backtesting result here because we have a on tester result here and it's 0 0.722222 period and um, this is because we have this as a return value for the on tester function also so what we can also do is here we can now or we could go ahead and check how to get the highest win rate with which settings can we get the highest win rate and therefore, you go to a meter trader five tester, choose the complete optimization, and for optimization um, uh, outcome here, you choose custom max because this is our custom return criteria, and we want to have this maxed out for the highest possible win rate. Then we choose a testing period, and I will just choose uh, 2023 here, um, just for a quick back test, and I will choose one minute OHC, so we can do a really quick test. And then in the inputs, we could now say that we want to optimize the starting hour for this strategy. So we could go with zero up to four 
And here we go with, uh, I don't know, 300 up to um, 450 <clears throat> for the uh, range minutes. And this is all I want to backtest. So yeah, I mean, I will not explain all the, all the details here, but just to show you how this optimization now works. So this will now run the optimization for this, um, uh, for this program. And you can see the first um, uh, results are here already. And um, it's not looking too great. I think it was just not really profitable in year 2023. So maybe we should test another year, um, 2022, or let's start starting from 2022 on, same test, and then we should see uh, profitable results here. And yeah, this is how you can uh, update your source code. This works with every program pretty much. You can just copy and paste it to your program. And um, yeah, again, this works with day trading strategies. If you have a intraday trading strategy, you would have to modify this a bit, but this is a method to figure out the average win rate of your um, um, of your strategy and yeah here you can see this is um, I mean of course you could multi multiply this with 100 but this is 91% uh, this 90% 89% and all the way down to 62% to win rate for this specific test with these specific settings so yeah this is how you can do it and yeah if we just do the test it kind of makes sense because there we do not really have big drawdown periods and pretty much every single starting day would have been a profitable challenge okay so i hope this video was not too confusing this is something i was working on lately and i hope i was able to um yeah to show you the power of automated trading again on uh, and uh, the power of meter trader 5 programming there's so much stuff you can do and this will increase your chances of winning a prop firm challenge dramatically because you really know what you can expect and you do not have to do the challenge blindly you really know the um the win rate when you start a challenge today how it is and i mean of course this is all based on historical data and the future is always unknown and of course the test will have a little bit better results than the live trading depends on different stuff like um, uh, the, the broker cost, the slippage and stuff. So a testing environment is never perfect. But I mean, this is still better than trading blindly, right? So yeah, I hope um, that some of you guys can use this. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Again, check out the video links if you want to learn how to write code for the MetaTrader 5. It will, it will boost your, your trading experience like, like crazy. I mean, I wasn't even trading profitable before I started programming for the MetaTrader and started automatic trading. So check it out. It's definitely worth it. And thanks for watching. Have a great time. Good trades. Bye.